right, guys, last question in chapter 11. We have a survey by the National Institutes of Health asked a random sample of young adults ages 19 to 25 years old, where do you live now? That is, where do you stay most often? Here is the two-way table. So it looks like we broke this down, not just by where you live, your living situation, but also your gender. All right, so I can see here that out of all these folks that I surveyed, and I think there's about, um, well, well, we'll count up how many there are in here in total, how many folks we had in total in our survey. Um, let's actually do that right now. So we'll do 923, 144, 1294, 127, 986, 132, 1129, and 119. It looks like over here in the bottom right-hand corner, it looks like I surveyed whew, 4,854 young adults between the ages of 19 and 25. But where I was going with this is of those 4,854 people surveyed, I asked them, where do you live now? And that was a categorical variable. I put them into one of these four categories and I also kept track of their gender. So I can see here I have two categorical variables. Right, I have your living situation. and I have your gender. Okay. Um, I also see I have eight categories in total because I have four rows and two columns. So I, I see my eight categories. Another thing that I wanna point out, right? Again, like always, these numbers, these are frequencies, right? So again, we have a bunch of frequencies. I know I'm gonna wind up being in proportion land. So in my margins, I'm gonna put that I'm in prop land Right, I see I have eight categories. So I'm gonna be running a, a chi-squared test. That's where this would fall. And it would specifically be a chi-squared test for independence because I have my two categorical variables. Now, before we get going, I have, well, we can get going. We have the mini tab output for a chi-squared test is shown below. State the appropriate, appropriate hypotheses and what conclusion can you draw? So before we get going on the mini tab, let's just, practice a bit in terms of what we would write up if we were gonna use our calculator. Because I wanna compare and contrast what the mini tab will give you versus what your calculator will give you. So if we were gonna look at this, I'm just gonna, since I have some space here and I can keep it all, can we see this if I write over here? Ooh, we can't. Let me move this up just a bit so that we have view of the table and a little space for me to write in. Okay, so if we take a look at this, I'll put it here. If I was going to write the null, right, I have three options. It would be that I, I could say my two categorical variables, I could use the phrase are independent, have no relationship, or have no association. So I'm going to go ahead and do the independent version. So I'm going to say living situation and gender are independent. And then the alternate would be that living situation and gender are not independent. All right, so that would be my null and alternate where it says state the appropriate hypotheses. This is your null and alternate, whether we're gonna do it on the calculator or use the mini tab. But let's use the calculator right now. I want, I want us to see, let's cut to the chase, see what our calculator would tell us to do. And then I wanna compare that to this mini tab. So if I go over and edit out matrix A, it looks like I have four categories for a living situation and two categories for gender. So we'll go 923 and let me type all this in. Let me make sure I don't have a typo. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And again, I'm just gonna cut to the chase and run the chi-squared test. All right, and then we'll head down here and hit calculate. 
So it looks like if I was gonna do anything, I would reject the null, right? Because my p-value, let me just take note, my p-value is about 1%. And I say this because they're asking what conclusion can you draw? And I want you to see that from the calculator, if my p-value is 1%, oh, let me move that up just a bit so you can see it, I, I would wind up rejecting the null because our p-value would be less than alpha. All right, and let's just take note of some of the numbers that I'm seeing here. I see a chi-squared test statistic of about 11. I see three degrees of freedom and a p-value about 1%. So let me actually take notes on all of that just so we can remember it. And then we're gonna look at the mini tab, okay? So it looks like if I, this would have been step two, this would have been step three. If I was gonna do step 10, I would have had a chi-squared test statistic of 11.04. If I was gonna do step 11, my p-value would have been, what, 0.01. And if I was going to do step eight for degrees of freedom, I would have had three degrees of freedom. It's a little out of order, but all right, I would have had degrees of freedom being three. All right, so I'm gonna move away from that. And then now I want us to focus on what this mini tab is saying. So let's, let's start to see what on earth this mini tab is talking about. So let me get my mini tab in view and let's see if we can draw the same conclusion or see where this information is coming from. So if you look at this mini tab, right, you see your four rows Right? So one, two, three, four, and your two columns. So this first row has to, it correlates or it's associated with parents' home. This is another person's home. This is you live in your own place. This is you live in group quarters. So this was the four categories for living situation. Okay? And you can see at the top here, the top row, right? We've got female male, 923, 986, 144, 132. These eight numbers or your observed counts, all right? We saw those in the table, so the mini tab is just giving those back out. Other things that I wanna point out, we see the totals here. If you on your calculator did 923 plus 986, let's do this, 923 plus 986, you would see 1909. So there is your row total, right? This would be your row total, row total, row total. And you can see down here, we got 2488 and 2366. Those are our column totals. And we did this by hand and got 4854, but your mini tab does it for you, right? It's much nicer than your calculator output. And it should be, you're paying a lot more money, right? We don't use it because this program is about $1,000, but that's pretty nice that it pumps back out all of your totals so you don't have to add anything. All right, but now I wanna deconstruct what this next level of, of numbers is. So it looks like this top row here, or this top number is your observed. All right, so let me just take note of that. This was your observed. All right, let's go one more level down. Let's take a look now at this one. I'm gonna highlight these just so we can kind of color code them. So the second number in each of those eight clumpings, let's see what this second number is. So this second number, you can almost guess what it is, but I'm gonna remind you. Because I ran the chi-squared test, if I go back into the matrix, you see matrix B has some information in it. You see 978.5, 141.5, 1241.9. So you can start to see that these numbers that I highlighted in orange, those are your expected counts. So the mini tab will put this all in one view, expected. All right, where in your calculator, you have to go into your different matrices. And, and I'm not saying it's bad, it's just a different way of presenting it. All right, so this third number here. All right, let's see if we can unpack what this third number is. I'll kind of squiggle it in red. And here's one advantage that Minitab has over your calculator. So this third number in each of these little eight subsections here. This third number is nice and your calculator doesn't do this. So if you think back to the formula for contributors, all right, I'm gonna do the contributor for females who live in their parents' homes. So we would have done observed minus expected. I would have squared that number and divided it or put it in ratio to the expected. And there's my contributor of 3.147. 
All right, so what the mini tab will do that's even nicer than your calculator is it will actually get all of your contributors for you. So that third number in that clump is a contributor. And in fact, if you took up all eight of these numbers and added them, you would get to your chi-squared test statistic. So let's just try that real quick. So if I took 3.147 and I added 3.309, this contributor, this contributor, If I added all of those, we get about 11.038. And what was our chi-squared test statistic that we got from our calculator? 11.04. So your mini tab will give you all of your contributors, all right? So then let's take a look at the last few things we've got here. If you'll see here, it says chi-squared 11.038. Well, there is your test statistic. There are your degrees of freedom. There is your p-value. So your mini tab gives you all of that information, one output screen, nicely presented. And, and that's part of why it costs more. And you might be thinking, that is not worth it. I will take my TI-83 and it's only a hundred bucks. This is a thousand bucks. It's not worth $900. I totally agree. It's not worth $900. But if you're like in the stats world and you're using this stuff all the time, it is worth it. But for Math 43, it's definitely not worth it. All right, so we gotta just finish this out. What conclusion can we draw? So if I was gonna draw a conclusion, we would say because our p-value is, all right, it was 1%, we're gonna go less than alpha of 5%, right? So because our p-value is less than alpha, we would reject H0. And then we would say we have sufficient evidence that living situation and gender are not independent. Or you could say we have significant, significant evidence of a relationship between living situation and gender. But I'll just write, we have, I'll say sufficient evidence that living situation and gender are not independent. All right, now let me make sure we can see all of that. Um, because I rejected the null, I might have made a type one error, just to review of what error we might have made. I could also say, that my results are statistically significant. Anytime you reject the null, we say it's significant. It's literally statistically significant because we rejected the null, we rejected the status quo. All right, so just a couple of topics to review. Whenever you reject the null, might have made a type one error. And whenever you reject the null, you can say your data is statistically significant. All right, so that's gonna wrap up chapter 11. We're gonna do a quick little summary and then we're moving on to our last chapter, guys. All right, I'll see you in a bit, bye.